So this is kind of like the, the final, uh, final level type problem for this section, analyzing a rational function. It has a little bit of everything in it. In fact, as you notice right off the bat, perhaps you have to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite the function down here, factoring the numerator. And if factoring is an issue for you, then maybe pause the video and see if you can uh, give it a shot first. Uh, so let's factor the numerator first. Okay, so we have factors of 15 would be 5 and 3, 15 and 3, so we have 3 and 5. Oh, there we go. So 3 and 5. So I'm doing a little mental math here, finding the factors of 15 that if I uh, multiply these two binomials together, 2x times 3 is 6x, five, 6x and 5x can give me negative 11. So we have 2x minus 5 times x minus 3. So those are the factors. You can confirm that, but if you want to just kind of move on and go back to the factoring later, you can. And then uh, for this, the denominator, I'm assuming that 2x minus 5 will be a factor in the denominator, so I'm just going to put that in and see if it works. Uh, so if it's negative 5 there, then it's going to have to be positive 2 there because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And let's check. So multiplying the outers together, 4x and negative 5x is negative x. So check. So what we want to do is first of all factor both numerator and denominator. And when we set the denominator equal to 0, we find a couple things. Okay, so thing number 1. Let's find the x values first. So if we add 5 to both sides and divide both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 5 halves. Okay, so if we subtract 2 from both sides here, we get x is equal to negative 2. So we know that the domain is all real numbers x, such that x cannot equal 5 halves, and x is also not allowed to equal negative 2. So the question is, do we have vertical asymptotes at both of those? Well, the answer to that is no. We don't have vertical asymptotes there. Why? Because vertical asymptotes can only be found after you convert that function to simplest form. So we have, uh, so let's convert it. So we have, uh, once we cancel those factors, we have y equals x minus 3 over x plus 2. So the deal is here that this function is going to look just like this function with the exception of when x is equal to 5 halves, there's going to be a hole in the graph. So we're just going to draw this graph uh, in, its simple, in its reduced form and analyze the whole, the whole function in its reduced form and, um, and not worry about what it was originally, other than because we've already had, we, we already have identified what the domain is. So uh, let's Let's keep going here. So uh, x-intercept, we get the x-intercept when we set the numerator equal to 0. So when x minus 3 is equal to 0, we see that x is equal to negative 3. Sorry, x is equal to positive. I said negative 3, but I wrote positive 3. So x is equal to positive 3. And so 3, when you replace x with 3, it causes the fraction to equal 0. 0 over 5, and that's 0. Okay, so that's an x-intercept. Well, what happens when we let x equal 0? That's when we want to find the y-intercept. With that x equals 0, we get 0 minus 3 over 0 plus 2, that's negative 3 halves. So we have uh, y equals negative 3 halves. But remember, we always want to write these intercepts in terms of ordered pairs. So when x is 3, y is 0. And when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 3 halves. And we can go ahead and plot those points as well while we're at it. So we have 3, 0, put a dot there. And then we have 0, negative 3 halves. And negative 3 halves is negative 1 and a half. So that's negative 3 halves. OK, so we have negative 1 there and negative 2 there. So we know the graph of this function goes through those two points. And then let's find our horizontal asymptote. So we find our horizontal asymptote by identifying what the bubbles are. Bubbles are the same top and bottom. So we peel off the coefficients. And so we see that the coefficients are 2 over 2 or 1 over 1. And so we get y equals 1. That's, actually, I should have looked up here. So 2 over 2 is 1 over 1, which is 1. So y equals 1 is the horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and draw that horizontal asymptote. I like to draw my asymptotes in, in red. It kind of stands out a little more. Just a different color would be fine. And then vertical asymptotes. Now, 
vertical asymptotes are found when when you set the denominator equal to zero so whatever number whatever x makes the denominator zero in the reduced form so the reduced form is when you have an x plus two down here so x plus two equaling zero oops x that meant to write it plus x plus two equals zero therefore x equals negative two so x equals negative two is our vertical asymptote negative two there and we have our vertical asymptote now also, we don't want to forget about that five halves. Now, five halves is two and a half. Okay, so two and a half is right there. So that's where that's five halves. So as soon as we, um, it, when we draw the graph, as soon as we get to the part where x is five halves, we're just going to leave a hole. We're going to draw the graph normally, but just leave a hole right there where x is five halves. Okay, so we're going to connect our dots. We're going to connect vertical asymptote to horizontal asymptote and we have a, a hole right there and then we have our hor oh I didn't mean to go past that so let's just fix that up a little bit so we have the horizontal asymptote uh, the, the graph would stay below that now it, it, in reality you, you don't really know yet without further analysis that it doesn't kind of go up like this and come down but the bottom line is it's above the x-axis when x is to the right of three and it approaches, eventually approaches y equals 1. Okay, and then the only other place for this graph to be would be up here. Okay, the only place it could possibly be would be up there. It can't be down here because you have to get from vertical to horizontal asymptote, and if you start down here and move over this way, you'd have to cross the x-axis, and we don't have any more x-intercepts. Now, the last thing that would be kind of cool if you knew how to do is to find that, that y-coordinate of that hole. And to find the y-coordinate of the hole, you just figure out, well, what would the y-coordinate be if there wasn't a hole? And you would plug 5 halves into here. So if you replace x with 5 halves in the reduced form, you have 5 halves minus 3, and 3 is 6 halves. 5 halves plus 2, and 2 is 4 halves, just getting a common denominator there. So in the numerator, we have 5 halves minus 6 halves, that's negative 1 half. Denominator is 5 halves plus 4 halves, that's 9 halves. Okay, so now that gets a little tricky. Easiest way was just be, would just be to multiply top and bottom by 2 and the 2's go away. So we get negative 1 over 9. So negative 1 over 9 is the y coordinate and that fits with the way we drew our graph. And so the, the whole would have coordinates 5 halves comma negative 1 ninth. And that's where the whole is. You didn't, you didn't have to find that, but um, you didn't have to find the coordinates of that, didn't ask you to do that, but nevertheless, now you uh, hopefully have a good idea of how to do that. So there you go.